In the heart of Navajo Nation lies a magical canyon with sheer red cliffs, ancient mysteries, and untold tales. When I first glimpsed Canyon de Chelly years ago, its soaring rock walls lined with cliff dwellings captivated my imagination. Who were the ancient ones that carved their homes here? Why did they choose perilous cliffs over the valley floor? Do modern Navajo honor their ancestors within these hallowed canyon walls? I wondered. On a return trip to steep myself in legends of Canyon de Chelly, a place early explorers deemed Canyon of the Ancient Ones, I uncovered even more intrigue layered through the ages in this sacred place. Just what epic stories might these towering temples reveal if I venture deeper into their allure and history? Canyon de Chelly encompasses over 84,000 acres of federal land within the Navajo Nation territory in northeastern Arizona. The monument contains one of the most unique and breathtaking landscapes in the American Southwest. Sheer red sandstone walls rising 600 to 1,000 feet above the wooded and farmed canyon floor. The valley bottom along the cottonwood-lined Rio de Chelly and its main tributary, Canyon del Muerto, Canyon of the Dead, is lush and fertile, in stark contrast to the dry desert and high plains that surround it. The main canyon stretches over 55 miles from rim to rim, Spider Rock, the park's most iconic landmark, stands 800 feet tall at the mouth of Canyon del Muerto. This slender, high-towering sandstone spire is considered sacred to the Navajo people and associated with important cultural legends. Further evidence of the native people's deep ties to Canyon de Chelly are found throughout its cliffs and alcoves. Intricate pictographs, multi-room cliff dwellings, farming terraces, and artifacts dating back 5,000 years Today, dozens of Navajo families still farm and live within the canyon, keeping centuries-old traditions alive. But how did this magnificent canyon come to be in the high desert wilderness? What draws visitors from around the world to its depths? The first people moved into Canyon de Chelly around 2500 BC. For thousands of years, native tribes seasonally migrated in and out of the protected canyon to take advantage of its precious resources for hunting, gathering, and small-scale farming. Around 750 to 900 AD, more sedentary villages began developing along the canyon floor. But around 1100 AD, changing climate conditions and increased conflict drove tribespeople to seek safety in hard-to-access cliff dwellings. For the next 300 years, ancestors of today's modern Pueblo Native Americans, often collectively referred to as ancestral Puebloans, intensely populated the area now protected within the park boundaries. In Canyon del Muerto and the western end of Canyon de Chelly, defensive cliff dwellings were carved high above the valley floor. These small communities shared multi-story stone Pueblos and subterranean ceremonial rooms called kivas tucked beneath canyon overhangs. Strategically built granaries, farming terraces, and complex irrigation systems enabled year-round habitation despite the shelter's vertical locations. By late 1300s, most ancestral tribes abandoned the cliff dwellings, likely due to climate issues, disease, and conflict. Over the next 200 years, Canyon de Chelly stayed mostly unoccupied, except for intermittent farming and ceremonies by ancestral Hopi and Zuni peoples. Modern Navajo Era in the 1600s, Navajo people called Dine migrated into Canyon de Chelly, or Sei, in their language, seeking refuge. Today, over 3,300 tribal members still inhabit the canyon, preserving Navajo ways, farming, arts, and raising livestock amid ancient ruins. Driving along, visitors may glimpse residents riding horses or tending farms and orchards. Though tourists cannot access homes without a guide, they may meet craftsmen or hear elders sharing folklore. Over the years, settlers threatened the isolation of Dine in Canyon de Chelly. At one point, Colonel Kit Carson sought to control the tribe by raising their canyon lands, killing many. But Navajo rebounded to reclaim their ancestral home where they now maintain self-governance, even as park visitors rise. Unlike other parks, Canyon de Chelly directly supports the native community through tour fees and art sales, Hiking the steep, unguarded rim trail showed the true enormity of the canyon, with thrilling views of the far below valley floor. More astonishing, glimpsing intact cliff houses and granaries carved directly into the sheer vertical walls, exhibits answered lingering questions about the ancient stonework. On the driving tour, we admired sweeping canyon views described on our map. 
At Junction Overlook, we eyed legendary Spider Rock Spire and envisioned the Spider Woman legend. Further along, we viewed mind-boggling cliff complexes looming over still lush farmland. Descending inside the canyon on a guided tour revealed up-close looks at soaring rock walls and ruins impossible to absorb from the rim. Bumping down dirt roads delivered intimate encounters, wild horses, native flowers, Navajo hauling produce. Native guide Peter illuminated ancient sites like Antelope House, plus modern native life unknown to tourists. He detailed families' struggles to access adequate water here. Pete also shared Navajo language and legends bringing richer meaning to historic sites passed en route. The most exhilarating surprise was spontaneously joining a family on the banks of the Rio de Shelly while they demonstrated traditional corn grinding. Our guide translated as Grandma Crushing Corn happily educated us about uses for each grounded grain size and medicinal plants growing nearby. I tried my hand at manning the gritty grindstone and gained new appreciation for the labor required to prepare the staple food that sustained ancestral Puebloan people for centuries within this valley. On our final day, we hiked down the only unsupervised route tourists can attempt into the canyon without Navajo guide, the steep 2.5-mile White House Trail. We shared the dusty path with wild burrows migrating between grazing areas on the high plain and valley. I was grateful for route-finding cairns directing us ever downward through successive geologic layers revealing the Sentinel Buddha sandstone wall's complex composition and alluring bands of color. The trail ends abruptly at a ledge directly across from a large light-colored ruin nearly ground level called White House. Seeing intact T-shaped doorways and crumbling second-story beams, I imagined the rewarding yet challenging everyday life these defensive cliff homes offered native people seven to eight hundred years prior. What incredible resolve ancestral Puebloan people possessed to build and sustain entire communities along staggering precipices through skill and spiritual tradition. Absorbing echoes of their ancient world here in the canyon depths made the arduous hike and journey to understand this place profoundly worthwhile. Today, Canyon de Chelly remains one of the most complete and revered native cultural sites in America. Though growing crowds visit, generations of Navajo persist in isolated, self-sufficient lives here much as their forebears did for thousands of years. Support their future by coming with an open, respectful mindset to explore this canyon of the ancient ones. But also allow wonder about ways of life different from your own to lead you into calm presence. Let the towering depth of quiet canyons clear away pre-existing assumptions. Picture echoes of hooves, harvest songs, and grinding stones resounding off time-worn rock temples as you pass through. Canyon de Chelly's magical allure across ages owes to fluid cycles of past and future birthing present moments as they must, 